The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And good. Started recording. And help me, PowerPoint. You're my only hope. There we go. All right, let's get started. Hello, everybody. My name is John Mayer. I'm the Executive Director of CALI, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. You are attending our regular series of A to J Author New User Webinar, the 2020 series. This is being recorded. Everyone is currently on mute. If you want to speak or jump in, and I allow that and encourage that, you would uh, click the little hand raiser. Um, I'm going to make sure I've got this up so I can see that your hands are raised in my dashboard. Very good. Um, the next A to J new user webinar is uh, Thursday, May 7th, 11 to 12. Normally the person talking is Jessica, Jessica Frank. She's uh, taking a day off and I uh, agreed to fill in for her, but what I did not agree to do was to give a normal A to J author uh, new user webinar. And the reason for that is uh, because that, right? Everybody's uh, been, everybody's lives have been upended by this pandemic. And um, I thought I would take this opportunity to, uh, to do a little high altitude thinking and also to uh, get feedback from you um, or, or, or see how it goes. I promise I'm going to keep this short 15, 20 minutes, I hope at most, but, uh, but I do have a lot of uh, interesting ground to cover. I needed to remind you that if you want to see these, this webinar or any past ones, um, it's at our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash A to J author. Um, I was just looking at that and there's um, videos going back to 2012. We've been doing this a long time. Um, if you have any questions or, or, or would like some help or training or support, Jessica at Cali.org is your best bet. If it's a technical or a back-end thing, are you self-hosting or something like that? Tobias at Cali.org is your best bet. Um, and if you want to complain about their uh, their work, then then I'm your best bet. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I know Tobias is on the call. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So normally this is the A to J author new webinar, but this is this is the title for this. This is access to justice in a pandemic, and then I've got that second line, which is sort of like a fill in the blank, and that's going to be my agenda, because after you say something like access to justice in a pandemic, you might say something like you know, let's do some field studies and in legal innovation, and I'll explain that. Or you might say, if only we had been better prepared or done something. Or you might say, what are lessons learned from this? Or you might say, let's not waste this crisis. I am a Chicagoan, and my former mayor was Rahm Emanuel, and he's famous for making that, that statement that, uh, you know, we should not waste a crisis. Um, and finally, silver linings, if there are any. Um, we're, we may not be through the worst of it yet, but um, I think we can already see some silver linings on, on, this, uh, on this event in our lives. So let's get started really fast. All right, field studies. So first of all, uh, A to J author is about self-represented litigants, SRLs. And if you remember, this is, this is not anything you don't know, uh, they don't have a lawyer. That's why they're called self-represented litigants. They basically replace money, the money that they don't have to hire a lawyer, with their own time or and with the stress that they experience uh, learning as they go in the system. They have to make decisions based on low information. They didn't go to law school. They don't, they don't, they don't know where to find this information. They're essentially in a hostile environment, and the mistakes in that hostile environment are punished harshly. If they screw up, um, you know, they don't, they don't understand that the system has ways to mitigate their problems, but it's difficult for them. And, and unusually, there, there is little, I'll say, I won't say no, but there's little community support. And, and I put a, a versus medical for there. Almost any medical condition or disease or problem, you can find a support group on the Internet somewhere. Um, less so with law, or at least less so helpfully because of the extreme uh, jurisdictional versions, uh, extreme jurisdictional nature of, of law. 
the thing we always have to remember here is that the system, the justice system, was not designed for self-represented litigants. It was designed for the lawyers, and it was designed for the judges, and it was designed for the people who administer the system. Um, and we're in the middle of a big transition, at least we hope we are, that makes it more user-friendly for everybody. You know, um, it's worse than that. The system was not even designed for anything else that SRLs are familiar with. So uh, I, I constantly use analogies of the justice system is like tech support or the justice system is like the medical system or something like that. But those are really poor analogies because the justice system is what it is. It's its own uh, unusual thing about how you go about uh, accomplishing any of hundreds or thousands of different tasks that involve the law. And so what that means is you cannot often use domain knowledge that you have in one place to, to succeed in another. So, so I ran across this tweet, and, and there's a lot of tweets popping up in this, uh, in this presentation because they, I, I look for things that capture sort of the essence. Um, and Darren here said, you know, sadly, COVID has been the great equalizer. Pre-pandemic, a small percentage of people had access, and now it's the same for everyone. I don't 100% agree, but 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 I think you get the idea. Is now we are all trying to be self-represented litigants, or we're all trying to access the courts remotely. And the cool thing that has happened here, that that if in case you weren't aware of, um, oh wait, I had a sort of a whole court thing. Let me back into that, is that the pandemic hit and the court said, we got to we got to continue continuity of business. So this is a screenshot from a couple of judges in Texas. And it's a it's a webinar that they did. Oh, I think this is what streamed on the 27th. So only about a, less than a week ago. But they did they did one earlier where they were explaining to judges how to do Zoom conference, how to do Zoom uh, court hearings. Um, and if you listen to it, it's 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 almost like a small um, seminar in rapid legal design thinking. In other words, what are the essential things to get this done? What's the most important things? How do we preserve the things that we value in a court case? You know, fairness and privacy and security and all sorts of things. And and it's it's and if you realize that these are judges who, and I'm going to back up now, who with courts where the priorities were, we don't have enough money to change, um, the system isn't supposed to help uh, SRLs, this is the way it's always been done, um, maybe some of the design is uh, is called administrative burden or there's a political obsolescence to it, in other words, why should we be helping these people? Um, those in, in that, and, and those in the most pain, which is to say that mostly self-represented litigants don't have a lot of input into the decisions that courts and counties and governments make about their justice system. They're not at the table often. Um, and this didn't happen overnight, right? This, the, the frog is boiling is a reference to that metaphor of, you know, if you drop a frog into boiling water, he'll jump out. But if you put him in cold water and slowly raise the temperature, he, he won't notice that it's too hot before he's boiled. You know, this, this has been a long time coming. And, and uh, um, this was an article as far as near back as 2015 on the Zoom website. You know, how much as a whole do you believe the United States court system is open to video conferencing? And it's very pessimistic. My impression is that it's very slow to adapt. This is new technology, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff we're very familiar with, you know, as far as that goes. Um, and so, and so, and so it, it, there's a whole new thing that has just happened. Now on that, uh, this is another screencast, uh, sorry, screen grab of uh, of judges, and in my understanding, there were 500 of them on this webinar learning about how to do online court uh, hearings, which blows my mind that that all of a sudden there's this desire, this leap for the use of technology, anything we can do to keep going. I get the emergency, and I'm I'm actually delighted that even even though I'm not delighted about the pandemic, I'm delighted that that there's a reach for technology that I have been promulgating for over 20 years. Um, and, you know, with the A to J project for over 15 years, A to J author project, trying to get courts and 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 players to say, you know, if you automate things, you know, even if you automate the simple things, you know, I'm not talking about doing big, complicated, hundred million dollar projects. 
um, it, it will benefit not just self-represented litigants, but everybody who uses the system. Uh, the, the, the Texas Judicial Branch has put up this uh, awesome you know, informational web page. This is something you never would have seen two weeks ago. Um, and and uh, Roy, uh, Judge Roy Ferguson, and um, I can't remember the other one's name, but I'll, it's on the next slide, you know, have been tweeting like crazy. Zoom tip for lawyers. Normally, no one is watching you during testimony. Now, a close-up of your face in HD is in view. Be aware that your instant reactions and micro expressions are visible. Work on your poker face. This is hilarious. So in some ways, being in a Zoom meeting is more present than being in a room where you might be 10 or 15 feet away from people. You know, whereas the camera is right on your face, you know, as you're talking. And so the four corners of every micro expression, you know, that I might have reacting to something could be part of the record. So you have to be, you know, so that's like a little, a little tip there for, for folks. Um, you know, uh, I, I suggest that everyone uh, watch a few Zoom hearings and see for themselves. Great advice. Two weeks ago, there were no Zoom hearings for people to watch and to learn about this. Um, here, here's another one. So uh, here it is, Judge Emily Miskell. Um, she got a question from Ferguson. They've been sort of tag teaming this. How do we publish video audio recording via Zoom? And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to get complicated. You know, there's going to have to be a long explanation about uploading files to Dropbox and the access. And instead, the, to make a very long story short, they held the cell phone, the, mic, the, 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 the phone with the video or the audio playing up to the microphone. In other words, they just did it analog. And it worked fine for what they were doing, and of course, it's not the best possible way to do it. But, but you know, th this is what emergency legal design thinking looks like. You know, a screen share would work for a video. It might work for a video with audio. If not, one possibility is play it from another source near the microphone. And then he's like, "Let's test this out," which is awesome. <laughs> All right, so. Watch the judges. They're doing some fascinating stuff out there. And, uh, you know, like uh, William Gibson says, the future is not uh, – the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. In this case, we have the largest, quickest distribution of the future ever. So what's the if only? So so let, let me come back off of that and, and, and share this tweet. So uh, Congress passed uh, the CARES Act, which helps – which means more people are um, – uh, ava uh, uh, not available, um, um, uh, allowed to uh, sign up for things like food stamps and assistance, you know, and then here's this tweet. I just spent an hour downloading documents for food stamps and health insurance, and it wouldn't process it. I want to cry. They make it impossible to actually get assistance. So, gee, if only we had some way to automate forms for legal or administrative processes that were designed by people who know that this is a difficult thing for self-represented litigants, you know. What's my point? My point is that you and I, people on this call and people in the uh, access to justice community have been doing just that, you know, and now we're finding that, uh, uh, you know, if we had done a lot more of that, then we might have mitigated some of the um, some of the uh, difficulties that people are having. So quite a few years back, we did a little study. Matt, I see you have a question. I'll get you in in just a second. Quite a few years back, we, had a, we, had a, we did a little study where we like counted the number of automated forms of the simple low-hanging fruit. We came up with this uh, rough rubric that basically said it looks like only about 19% of them have actually been done. So there's a lot, of, lot more work to be done. Um, we're going to participate with the uh, with Miguel's uh, Access to Justice Tech Fellows. We're, we'll be hiring a, a person this summer to update that study and and hopefully turn that into something that's that's a that's a, a fantastic community resource, sort of a dartboard of possibilities for low hanging fruit for document automation, um, kind of a part a, a, a part cataloging and a part survey project. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna unmute you, Matt. And then you disappeared. Wow, is that weird? You're un you're unmuted, Matt. What's 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 your what's your what's your comment or question? Oh, this, 
I just have a difficulty hearing the audio through the computer. Uh -huh. so it's all garbled. So I just had to switch to the phone, but and that's been working beautifully. So sorry, but but I want to say keep going. This is so great. I'm going to share with the entire <laughs> team at Aleo. Well, so, good. Thank you. Onward. Yep, absolutely. Oh, thank you. I hope you know. I hope who, those of you who are listening through uh, the computer can hear me. I, I, I apologize if it is garbled. I'll. Um, uh, I am recording, and so I'll. I'll listen to the recording and see if the if locally it worked fine. In, in which case, um, you know, we'll post it, and hopefully it'll be better. All right, lessons learned. So you know, are are we learning anything? Ah, you may be. See now. See now. It's even bugging me. You may be experiencing degraded audio quality. Please close any unused internet applications. Nope. Not much I can do there. I'm I'm the only one on this internet right now. So I meant to I meant to leave this page intentionally blank, which is to say, uh, I I was hoping that I could like uh, get some of your input on our our. Have you seen any of these things that I've just talked about? Are there any lessons? Uh, that 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 you've learned or any insights that that you might have, and I'm going to take uh, the chance and and unmute everybody. There we are. And if the and if that works, then anybody can jump in. That didn't work. All right, I'm going to go with Miranda. You got your hand up. Miranda, you're on mute. Sorry, I was just saying I can. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. I didn't mean to put my hand up. I just meant to say that I I can hear you well, and I'm on um, the app on my phone. Excellent. Thank you, Miranda. Mark Lordson, unmuting you. Hey, Mark, you're unmuted. Great. That's all I need these days. <laughs> did you Did you have any? I just also said. Uh, not really yet. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ruminating as you talk, John. So uh, I'll come back if I have any. Very good. Thank you. All right. If you've got thoughts or ideas, drop them in the chat, and I'll uh, take a look at that before we go on. Let's continue. So some lessons learned. Um, we canceled our Cali conference. Which is uh, uh, which happens in June? It's a it's a thing about it, it's a it's a conference where we bring together the faculty, the librarians, the tech folk of law schools to talk about their tech experiences. But we've recast it as uh, you know the pandemic edition. So it's going to be an, an entirely online conference where we're going to invite dozens of people to create little 15 minute. Uh, videos that we will post. We're going to be sending out uh, happy fun time boxes that have uh, t-shirts and name badges and granola bars for this for the breaks. Um, and I'm thinking there should be a there should be a parallel here if if this goes on, which is to say uh, I, I wouldn't mind if folks in the access to justice community or the legal tech community uh, wanted to participate in this conference. They they would. They would do a 15-minute podcast. You can go to 2020.kellycon.org. We'll, we'll be posting a brand new call for speakers there. If, if you wanted to do a 15-minute screencast podcast sort of thing that, that would be shared with, uh, with the quote-unquote virtual attendees um, you know, during the, the, the conference, we'll pick a, a small number of them and broadcast live or have, you, have the speaker reprise their talk. You know, just because we want to uh, include the sort of the the, the frisson, the the tension of of real real time interaction uh, for that. So so this is this is one of our lessons learned is that we we think we can continue to do this despite it. Um, law faculty have jumped in like crazy to create videos and materials to help each other. Uh, because we're in the middle of the largest legal education, heck, the largest educational distance learning experiment uh, of all time in which thousands of tens of thousands of, of faculty are having to figure out this this darn thing to to speak to their students it's not all sweetness and light either if you follow if you if you're on reddit and look at some of the uh, the student responses um, it, it's a little it's a little scary this is a, a, a webinar done by uh, um, um, 
I'm forgetting, I think it was Josh Blackman at George Washington, in which hundreds or dozens of law faculty came on to learn how to use Zoom, how meta, using Zoom to learn Zoom. Uh, we put up a, a web page called Resources for Law Faculty and Remote Teaching. All I did there was I noticed lots of people were tweeting things or dropping them into discussion lists. But, you know, with social media, it's a river of news. It goes by, it disappears. So I tried to pluck them, pluck these things out and grab them and stick them all on one web page at Corona. At the same time, other people were, pro were offering to teach for free to be guest speakers. So I did the same thing. I, I plucked those out and, and created a page and also did a little survey. And then, now there's over 80 people in the, in the legal tech space, in the access to justice space, who are uh, make them make themselves available to come into a class and, and do a little 15 minute or half hour uh, guest speakership. You know, these are all good ideas for us, the access to justice community. So let's not waste this crisis, right? This is this is the Rahm Emanuel thing. Um, I, I've seen that some law students are stepping up, uh, and this this is the one in Canada. An article articling student launches a legal tech collaboration website. Um, Amanda. Amanda Jerome, oh, I'm not sure that's, I think she just wrote the article, but I've got the uh, URL there. Cat Moon at Vanderbilt doing something similar uh, at, at her webpage, um, gathering the names of people who want to help with changing the legal uh, justice system. Um, the folks at Suffolk uh, and Doc Assemble, uh, I have the document assembly, document assembly line, I always wanna say document assembly, or is it assembly line? I guess that's the point. The document assembly line project, and Mark might have been uh, doing some work on that. Uh, so I'm going to unmute you in a moment, Mark, and, and ask if you want to uh, say anything about that. Um, which is awesome. This is this is this is great. I'm not sure that you can you can hackathon your way through this. It's 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 some of these things take a little bit longer, but but this is this is a crisis that we don't want to waste, and and this is also people people are both. Uh, weirded out and and freaked out and, and stressed by this thing, but they're also find some of them are finding themselves with lots of time, with with downtime, with with things to do, and so and so in in the chaos we might be able to pull out uh, the ability for people to do uh, neat projects. So you know it's all good if if that will work. Mark, do you have anything to say about the document assembly line project? You're unmuted. Sure, I think it, it is. Uh... It is way cool and impressive. I uh, encourage folks to take a look. It's it's designed to leverage the DocAssemble open source tool and a bunch of other related open source things like GitHub and Trello and and uh, Slack and Scrum strategies, et cetera, to basically do in a matter of days or weeks what John Mayer and I and others in the legal aid document assembly world have been trying to do for a couple decades. So it's both impressive <laughs> and scary. It's one of one of several efforts to do this. We of course have uh, ajauthor.org as an ongoing resource and Law Help Interactive, but we welcome as many different players as possible and an interesting new. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. So silver linings. Let's wrap this up. Um, this is another tweet from Cat um, at Vanderbilt. And I, and I love this. So just recorded Zooming Through Law School episode two. Um, you know, uh, she had a student join to share experience moving to online learning and let me say the future of law is in great hands. So what I, what I took from that, whoopsie daisy. What I took from that is that the students, the 100,000, 120,000 students uh, who are in law school right now, um, are going through this. So imagine them graduating and, and going into courts and going into practice and, and being told, well, you know, it, we, we can't do that online thing. You know, it's too hard. It's too complicated. No, everybody's getting a crash course and at least in, 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 in seeing how it works and seeing the possibilities of how it works. Some of them are going to get a disappointing crash course because it's it, it doesn't always work. It can't be used in all situations. But I, I like to think of, you know, all of these problems as like, um, uh, I love my analogies, like uh, Jell-O 1, 2, 3. So if you were, if you're my age, you might remember that Jell-O 1, 2, 3 was this new pudding product 
where you mixed up the pudding, you poured it in, and it would naturally separate into three la layers, you know, the thick layer in the bottom, the medium sort of mousse in the middle, and then like the, the, the light jello -y thing on the top. And that's what this is. We don't have to solve all the problems of the justice system. We can pick off the, 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 the easy parts, the ones that can be done remotely, the ones that can be automated, and leave the harder ones for the necessary interactions that lawyers must have with clients and with representation. You know, let's stop doing boring work. Let's practice at the top of our license. And, and that's basically all I've got to say about uh, access to justice in a pandemic is, is it's, a, it's an opportunity to see how things might be once we're past this problem. All right. Um, anybody want to comment or or ask any questions? I'll I'll pull this out and see if you've got your hand up. Tobias, I'm going to unmute you and ask how how the sound was on that. How was the sound on that? I haven't had any problems with sound. It sounds fine Good. to me. Good. Brett, I, I see you're unmuted. Good on Brett here. Yeah, can you hear me? I can. Oh, Go ahead. Okay, good. I, I looks like I'm having some troubles on my end, but uh, I don't really have anything to add, but I just wanted to say this was a great presentation. Thanks for uh, putting this together kind of kind of last minute. And I, uh, you know, I, I think it really is incredible what so many people in this industry and so many industries are doing um, and doing, you know, kind of at last minute's notice with very little, uh, you know, warning or prep time. So it's, it, yeah, it's just amazing seeing all the innovation that is coming out of this. And thanks, thanks for, uh, um, yeah, showing a little bit of that to us. Thanks, Brett. Appreciate it. All right. Anybody else? So as promised, I said it would be 30 minutes. It's exactly 1130. We're done. So be safe, wash your hands, take care, and uh, talk to you all later. Thank you very much.